important sense organ and the great and is a great source of knowledge about the world. Einstein used the fact that speed is equal to distance divided by time in elementary physics uh, to, to define uh, time and space. Though it can be expressed using the differential calculus if the relationship is not linear. And the speed of light is known thanks to the work of Maxwell and Hertz and others. So, the, so, so, so that selecting a unit distance and knowing the speed of light, one can define time a time unit at the time it takes light wave, wave which travels at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second to travel that unit distance. So Einstein created knowledge of the pneumonal world even though it was beyond our mind and helped explain him, uh, a few mysteries and he made a few predictions based on the theory which were confirmed later and thus all this helped confirm his general theory of relativity created about a hundred years ago. This is from page 7. <coughs> and it does help confirm that this world was indeed in, in time. It is tempting to say that Einstein proved that time in our mind and time in the world are thus different entities, but maybe this is not so explanation much, since SI and GR just say that our perception of time is different depending on our relative motion or acceleration. Super critique of Einstein. Also other physicists and philosophers after Einstein, but Einstein did not realize that by rejecting Kant's pneumonal view of the unconditioned, i.e. it is possibly outside time and arguing that it is in time, that he actually destroyed himself since Kant would have told him to his face if he was alive and if Einstein was alive that as a result he brings back the whole weight of the antimonies upon himself since they are no longer resolved. That is, Einstein invalidated Kant's solution of the antimonies also explanation mark. Even physicists got this mixed up. They don't seem to realize that. Since we use light waves to see the world, this solves many of the paradoxes of the theory of general relativity, like length contraction or curvature and time dilation or the twin paradox, etc., which troubled great physicists or at least should have troubled them if they didn't accept them out of their faith in mathematics and experimentation, even though they admitted that they were even against common sense. So it is, and so in this case, it is permitted to accept things that don't make sense. Exclamation mark crazy people or insane people or mentally ill people would love to heal this since they do this and they are often blamed for believing what goes against common sense. Actually, it also might have been a mistake. Einstein said it didn't make a difference what you use to define time, but we use light because we understand it. Well, first of all, it's a, is it a light or a wave? Is it particles or wave? And second of all, it's what we actually use to perceive the world. So it's not. I don't know if it's a very good, a very good uh, choice. Plus the constancy of the speed of light. He said it would destroy his theory if it was disproven. Well, I suggest maybe that's only it's only true inside our mind. That's why it's constant. Outside the world, you might need another theory of relativity. Uh, even Nietzsche says that physicists only study against the inner mind, really. So maybe you have to do what Einstein did, but in the mind you use light, and in the world you use the EM waves, but outside the mind, uh, the speed of light will be different for different observers, I think. Anyway, the argument of Kant was that we don't even know if the pneumonia are in time period, exclamation mark. So he used binary logic, yes, no logic. And Einstein established that pneumonia are indeed in time, though they exist in another kind of time dimension than that which exists in our mind. Or another argument is that Einstein established the existence of motion in the, in the outside world, and Aristotle and Maimonides argued that if motion if have motion and have time and corporeal objects must exist, since by definition of Aristotle, time is an accident of motion, which is an accident of corporeal things. Aristotle's argument against free will don't seem valid also. In one case, he splits the object to and move and move, but really he did not realize that by splitting the object far enough, 
you surely destroy its power of self-movement unless it is simple but you assume that it isn't uh, so that's that was one powerful argument of Aristotle uh, that's my critique another and in the potentiality actuality argument one may counter that you may be in act in absolute way and only potential in a relative way in infinite ways uh, okay so also he had another argument let alone his argument applicable to simple being only unable to change whether transition must be partly initial and partly in the next phase of the change so the object must be composite but if the transition is spontaneous question mark he did accept that the change in substance is instantaneous i.e. generation and corruption but Kant did, did distinguish between extensive simplicity and intensive simplicity in his critique of Moses Mendelssohn well, when Mendelssohn gave a proof that the soul is immortal but thinking is in time since you can't think instantaneously question mark so the Aristotle gave proofs for both extensive and intensive magnitude types of, of simplicity question mark so did Aristotle confuse two kinds of simplicity question mark anyway it follows that a free being must have intensive magnitude at least question mark okay my own argument against Kant unlike Einstein considers the ontological or met metaphysical proof of the existence of time in the world since Kant rejected the world or the pneumonia but I argue, that, I argue that even without using Einstein's method it's possible to argue that time exists in the world like proving other attributes of it a priori that is something exists in all universes and hence must exist in, in this universe or reality which must be a subset of the universe which is that which is the one which really applies to all possible real universes that is a universe which is consistent with itself and needs nothing no special con conditions to make it exist or that if it, any universe exists then it is sufficient that it, it too must also exist since both both have the same conditions to exist I think part of the argument of Kant was that uh, for Aristotle time and space were concepts also causality but uh, Kant argued that space and time are subjective so that's why you, we, we cannot speak of the whole world and go outside the mind um, and causality also uh, it says that you uh, woke him up out of it is dogmatic slumber because causality might not be a necessary law we can only we kinda, it's hard to prove causality in the world uh, really I think it goes back to Ghazali Ghazali even raised the question even of maybe a thousand years before us and hundreds of years before you about the law of causality when he, when he attacked uh, Avicenna and uh, Farabi and Aristotle and all those better still that time exists in our mind so it must exist in the world as well since we exist else the question has no meaning anywhere or uh, has any importance <coughs> and we experience sensations and thoughts which are in the t time and hence we can try to claim these thoughts as our own but still sensation seems to come to us from the world and they are in time since they keep changing and since time and sensations are joined it seems that sensations are caused by objects objects the sense organs or thalamus or cortex and that are in time or in motion and have matter well, I can't might have made a mistake that the series of appearance that comes to our mind really is, is not one direction it goes to comes to us but it also goes to the world um, it's bi-directional in fact, I think I thought that you know, actually, like one sense, can confirm uh, 
than another sense, like the eyes can confirm the ears or touch or something. And I think later I found out that Husserl also had the same idea. He really had it before me because he lived a hundred years ago. Haveros also argued that an effect cannot be delayed after its cause, so that if it had a cause then had an effect must follow immediately. And Maimonides argued that if there was an obstacle preventing the effect after the act of the cause, then really what removed the obstacle is the real cause and not the other cause. Well, cause is really force. Uh, today in physics we have, um, we see particles and forces really have, uh, you need a medium to exert a force, so there might be a delay. The human uh, gravitation waves, electromagnetic waves, have to go from one object to another to, to in order for there is a delay between I mean if you want for one ob for mass to exert an object on the other you have fermions and bosons one object to to affect the other uh, to send a wave to affect it so it, there is a delay in a way Unless you want to consider the the wave in the itself as part of the cause, whatever. Unified pure and empirical super method ways of proving the, that a God exists. It is also possible to combine our method, uh, Joseph Beaton, and the method of Albert Einstein in the following way. And a pure, pure and empirically unified proof of the existence of objects and their nature in the world God also and the existence of time. We can use Einstein's empirical method to create a view of the universe as given by uh, his theory of general relativity or maybe even his electromagnetic theory or his grand unification theory which has already been verified in several ways. Though it is incomplete and may have been misinterpreted. So basically we accept that we live in a world which is like his theory describes Maybe you can't use superstring theory yet, since it is only an, a mathematical theory which tries to unify all the forces of nature without evidence. Though Ed Witten unified several superstring theories into one superstring theory, and they do accept Einstein's theory as part of this theory, well, eventually they hope it will be unified with, with it. Although uh, Ed Witten already it was bad because you had 10 dimensions uh, he made turn it into 11 dimensions when he unified the five string theories and he called it M theory uh, I think it's a misconception because really Einstein's theory is perception I think uh, they say like three dimensions are curled up I think no I think each spatial dimension can be distorted in three ways and time can be distorted in one way so it gives you 11 dimensions I think it's a theory of perception. See, even I, th I think Aristotle's conception of, of matter might be wrong, or substance. You have matter in the form. I think matter, even that, that may even affect Kant. Even Newton might have gotten it wrong. Uh, First, dunes they have only one kind of matter, mass. I think now later they had um, charge, which could be either positive or negative. Uh, in fact, mass might be just a net charge. And we reduce uh, gravity and mass into electromagnetism and charge, maybe, as a unified theory. Um, I mean, just like you have males and females, or in the DNA you have two strands. You know, matter might be made up of a positive and negative charge, which might be just caused by the spinning. It might be spinning a different way. So that might explain a lot of problems. Even even in the philosophy of Aristotle and Maimonides, why how about held the necessary existence together? Could be that it, is, it has no cause, but it's it's made up of um, negative and positive necessary existence, and they are attracted to each other. So that holds it together. So it might not be simple. That that essentially will change the whole conception of necessary existence. 
and so it, it would be much more compatible with the Bible or scripture than Aristotle's conception. Okay, so uh, super string theory. So that might be a misconception because I, I don't think you have eleven dimensions. I think it's a question of perception. And hence we can far extend our a priori knowledge of our universe, which is limited to logic, mathematical and algorithmic principles and methods, and the fact that we know that there is a world out there. Since it exists to add that we also know that we know a lot about the nature of our world. We don't have to know what principles are common to all universes, the real logical multiverse, but what principles are common to a priori all Einstein type universes only. Such Einstein worlds have much more in common than the more general logical universes and thus we can have far more knowledge of the universe by this combined approach than by Einstein's method alone or by our a priori method alone. Okay, what about unifying this approach with the skeptical method of Kant? Question mark. Kant argued that we cannot know the world beyond appearances. We can know objects by repeated observation of the same object by one sense observing many objects of the same kind. Or I suppose or I propose also observing the same object by different sense organs, such as vision and hearing or touch to collect data and thus align the observation of one sense to confirm that of the other. Like I said, yeah, that was my idea. Later I read a summary of Husserl, uh, one of the founders or the father of phenomenology school or theory and that he had the same idea. Because at first he followed Kant like I did but he tries to go beyond it to know the world which Kant says we cannot know and one of the ideas is to use uh, one sense to confirm another. Another idea he has that is that you remove whatever is not essential to it or you ob observe an object.